Hi everybody. Today I'm going to talk about how I calibrate uh, these printers when I first get them in. So if you're somebody who's looking into getting one of these or just purchased one and you're looking for first steps to take, you're, you're in the right place. I refurbish quite a few of these. Um, in total, I've probably refurbished over 20 of these. I, uh, I look for good deals on them. I refurbish them, which in general doesn't take much. Uh, and then I open source them and, uh, and sell them. I, I sell them locally. I sell them on eBay, whatever. Uh, I've sold one of these to my boss and to coworkers. So I have a lot of faith in these printers. Um, but uh, there may be, even if you're familiar with this, I may show you a couple of tricks that you weren't aware of. Uh, so the very first thing, as soon as you get one of these, assuming filament is hooked up, and by the way, filament should never be installed or removed without the print head platform being warm, which means using the change cartridge utility. So if, assuming the cartridge is already installed, uh, you want to clean the print tip, and you would do that by purging i i do it by starting the purge utility for the print tip and once it's heated up a bit uh you can easily clean any filament that may be stuck to the bottom with uh a green scrub pad you can see i've used this quite a bit that works very well i also have something that came in some little packet of tools from Harbor Freight. I have no idea what this is, but it's handy at scraping under there, especially if filament has found its way to attaching to the bottom face of that assembly. That works pretty well. You can also use a pair of snips. Uh, be careful. I've recommended going under and pulling filament away with snips before. And I know people who have literally cut the tips of their, their print tips off. Um, don't, don't do that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's gone. And they don't make print tips anymore. And it, if you go to the forum and say, hey, I cut the, my print tip apart. Can you, somebody send me one? They're going to say, I will for $75. Uh, they, they're, they're, they're a valued commodity. So, uh, there's nothing, this one's nice and clean. You probably can't see it. There's nothing to clean off of here. So I'm gonna let this cool. Uh, once the print tip is clean, I've got, got a gauge ready. If you don't have this, uh, a piece of printer paper works fine. Just cut a little strip off. Uh, they'll, you'll find they're both, they both measure at 0.1 millimeters. Um, and the first thing you want to do is you want to run the auto level routine and actually I should say first thing you want to do clean the print print bed print plate uh, soap water maybe a scrubby uh, I don't know if you can pick this up this one's in really good condition you can just make out slight imprint from some prints uh, better than most. Make sure this is nice and clean. Uh, hot soap and water. Give it a good scrubbing. Dry it off. It's ready to go. And the auto level routine is very good. As mentioned in another video, if you auto level and then notice that one of your corners tends to have a little bit of lift, um, you, can, you can adjust pads two and three a little bit, give them like a, loose, loosen up the grub screw, give them a half a turn each, run the auto level again. When it corrects, when it tells you to correct those two pads, in general, it lands on true. And, and you're, oh, look at this. I have to adjust this. So, 
one eighth of a turn. Let me pause this. I'm going to go through this and start this over again for you guys. All right, this is good because now you know what to expect. So it's told me to loosen up the grub screw, which is one and a half millimeter. Again, this is not one sixteenth inch, but if somebody's already shammed, shoved a one sixteenth of an inch hex in there, you've got no choice. Uh, that will that will work fine. And give it a one eighth turn. Lock it down again. Okay. Yep. As expected, that was the only one needed. Let's see if I nailed it. Let's start the routine over again. Now, in general, I'll say once these are auto leveled and you've got the gap, Z gap dialed in, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. I've got a, I've got a, a really good way of doing that. Um, you're good. The printer, after so many prints, maybe every six to eight prints, it will ask you, it'll start bothering you to, to run calibration before you print. Uh, and I'll, I'll, and that's fine. When it does do that, as long as you have the Z gap dialed in, you can allow it to do this part of it and then cancel the Z gap. So allow the auto level to complete and then cancel the second part and then you're good. You're good for a while. Uh, but I'll show you. Actually, let me cancel that. So we've auto leveled. We know the plate's level. Now we're going to calibrate. And I do something new now that I go through the auto calibration. I'm going to tell you why in a second. But uh, this is something I never understood until Tommy D of Print 3D Forum explained it. Um, so I pull the plate off. Give this a second here. Pull the plate off because if the previous user had this calibration one number set like off the charts, your print plate will ram into the bottom of your print tip. And it actually did this on this very printer. That was actually set to over eight, so it's minus eight something. Uh, ran into it uh, and once that happened I couldn't get it up to 260 degrees Celsius uh, I had to use a trick to adjust it the other way um, so it could be so so just remove your print plate that way if anything's gonna run into anything it will it will be the pads running in to part of the shell uh, and then what this auto calibration is for is setting I like to get it close this isn't your Z gap this is where you tell the printer you know where where you'd like it to perform its auto calibration uh, functions from so it isn't necessarily home but what I find is if I get it pretty close to Z gap um, it does a much better job at auto leveling and auto gapping. So I've got that set. It's not even touching the print gap gauge, but I can see it's really close. Now there's a hidden button here. And now we're good. So if I cared, I'd do auto level again. I know it's going to be fine. So I'm going to go right to Z gap. And I'm going to tell you what the real secret is to Z gap.
and the tools you need for Z gap are a sticky note and a pen and a pencil. I'm going to show you why here in a second. So I'm going to validate that. It looks a little loose to me, and it is. So minus 356 is what it auto z gapped at. I like this to drag a little bit. Look at that. I'm at 3387, three, and that's... You're not going to be able to see it, but you can see if I push, it folds a little bit, so there's some resistance. So minus 387. That's my current Z-gap, minus 387. Now, I'm going to perform some test prints, and if that isn't quite right, I'll adjust it, right? If I need the, the print tip to be a little further away, then I'll maybe up that to minus three nine uh, minus three eight zero. That would actually be closer. And if it's not quite, if I'm not getting good first layer adhesion, I might go up to minus uh, three point nine to nine five. Uh, and I'm gonna every time I do that, I'm gonna make a note and very quickly within just a few prints. I'm going to land on the perfect Z gap. And so one thing I like to do, once I've got the perfect Z gap, I will actually name my printer, whatever that Z gap is, All right? Assuming this was it, I would make this a, oops, a minus, Three dot dot eight seven. This is if this is assuming I've done all the testing and I know, yeah, that's 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 my Z gap. Until I you know, until I have to lightly sand this or, or clean this plate up, that's going to be perfect for me. And then if I ever run an auto calibration and I forget to cancel the Z gap part of it, I can easily go right back to it. Uh, and and that, that has saved me a ton of time. If you have multiple cartridges, if you're one of those people that actually has quite a few cartridges and you swap, every print tip is a little bit different. And you are going to want to do that for each cartridge because the print tips are different. Uh, and in that scenario, I would recommend actually writing the recommended Z gap for that cartridge on it with, with a Sharpie. And then as soon as you pop it in, you know where you're supposed to be. Uh, they're pretty close. There is a tool, there is a jig that you can download it's out on uh, print 3D forum. You have to look for it. Uh, once you pulled the cartridge apart, you can actually use this jig to back off the little, I don't know what it is. It's like a lock washer or something that, that holds to the, uh, to the print jet and then setting it. And the benefit to this, it, it sets the length just a hair longer than I've seen most come from the factory. Uh, that ensures it seats fully into the heated bed. Um, and if you do this with all of your print tips, it ensures they're all dead nuts the same. So if you want to do dual color PLA, or you want to throw PVA in the mix for uh, wash away support, uh, you can feel comfortable knowing that when the other print jet comes into play, it's not going to mar your print bed or it's not going to be so far away that it doesn't adhere. Um, so it, I hope that helps some people that maybe struggle with, I, I think a lot of people lean on, I, I, I've got a buddy who's had one of these for years 
and, and I hooked him up. I hooked him up with an open source cartridge, and uh, he, I didn't realize he just lived off a of Z Gap, Auto Z Gap. And uh, I said, hey, make sure you Z Gap it properly after you get this. My tips are a little longer. He ran Auto Z Gap, went to print, sent me a picture of his print bed, and he said, hey, what the hell? <laughs> I've got this huge scratches on my print plate, and my tip is clogged now. And uh, I, I, you know, I fixed it for him. I said, yeah, never, never, ever trust Auto Z Gap. So, uh, hey, I hope that helps you guys. If, uh, if you'd like to say hey or, or have any other questions, go out to Print3D Forum and say hello. Thanks.